awful on the floor, you know, and then you set off up the ladder and uh, go through the fog and it's like being in an aeroplane. You can see all the chimney stacks and towers and church steeples and hills outside of town sticking up through all this cloud and sun shining up above. Beautiful. It's somewhat strange. Once you've started, you get, like, addicted to it. You just live it, you know, like, day and night, think about it, talk about it. I've never fell off a big chimney, you know. You only fall off one of them once, like... <laughs> one day, I fell off a pair of steps in a little girl's bedroom and landed on a drilling machine and knocked myself unconscious, and I don't remember much about it, but morning after, I couldn't get out of bed. Now, that just doesn't look safe, does it? It doesn't even look official. It's like they're building a monument to Boris Johnson's hair. You know, you've got to have a stout heart to take it on on your own. On the top, like, uh, on your own, you get a bit lonely, like, you know. Is it wise to lob that cigarette down there, Fred? Probably not. To make sure everyone knows the tower's about to fall, Fred sounds the alarm that can be heard across five counties. I don't think he even heard it himself. Run that bit backwards and it's the Olympic opening ceremony. No fuck. <laughs> Listen, you can hear the cheers of children safely watching from about ten feet away. Do you like that? <laughs> of course we did. And because nothing could possibly go wrong with such shenanigans, we demand you do it again. Yeah, the street. Anything else we can knock down while we're here? <laughs> Sadly, it turned out Fred was now just showboating, and this building was actually still occupied. Still, any concern at seeing the library demolished was soon forgotten as Fred gave the kids a toot on his klaxon again. <laughs> a rope had been thrown down into the boiling sea. The only way to get onto the Bishop Rock Lighthouse is to be hauled up by a winch. Lovely. OK. All right. All right. Hang on now, cos Still, at least Leslie's surrounded by experts, and they're not panicking at all. Oh, right. Well, this is one moment where I'm pretty glad that the experts are in charge, I can tell you that! Oh, OK, I've got Mike on one end, Larry in the other, and I'm not looking down! It wasn't until several seconds later that I realised what everyone else already knew. The harness that should have held me had slipped round my feet, and only the strength of my arms had held me on. Right, she did exactly what we did. Right, exactly what she yeah. said. It's nice to see you, Larry. <laughs> you jump out. Oh, all right. And the headline. So I don't want to go... The one that literally above <laughs> your head. It's very nice to see you, Larry, believe you me. Of course, who we're looking at here is the intrepid Leslie Judd, who, for my money, and possibly because she's a woman, isn't given half the credit she deserves for actively seeking out dangerous situations. She seemed to have a nose for it, like a cross between Evil Knievel, the human cannonball, and Skippy, the bush kangaroo. ..doing his housework when I arrived. Can't see any sign of Mike and the boat yet, though. No, well, you're looking towards America at the moment, that's why. <laughs> yes. no! I knew I had to get off the lighthouse the same way I'd come on. Oh, right. But I wasn't looking forward to the return journey, what? because I was worried that if the harness slipped off again, this time I wouldn't be able to hold on. I want it right up. Now, where's your body going in the harness? Yep. Right. Yep. Oh, 
rope's feeling pretty wet. And it's all dripping on my face. All I had to do was to try and keep calm. But ten metres below, the crew were struggling to keep my rope taut to stop me crashing back into the lighthouse. Mike needed all his skill and nerve to keep the heaving boat in position only just off the rocks. Oh, right. And to think, these days we make all that fuss about Richard Hammond. I've got no idea whether I'm near the boat yet. And I don't think I'm going to have a look and see either. I feel myself lowering down now. I seem to be getting lower. I don't know where I am. But I'm really looking forward to feeling some human hands grabbing my feet, I can tell you that. It seems to take longer going down than going up. Much longer. Mike just couldn't get the boat any closer in, and though the crew struggled to haul me across the last few feet, the rope didn't seem to be long enough. If I fell in here, I'd be smashed on the rocks just beneath the surf. Suddenly, I felt myself drop. I was more frightened than I've ever been in my life. Grab me, grab me. <laughs> Don't do it again, Dave. Don't do it again. I was glad I'd visited the Bishop Rock. It was an experience I'll never forget, but I was deliriously happy to be waving them goodbye from the safety of the boat. Oddly enough, some women still find lighthouses attractive. You know that song, I want to marry a lighthouse keeper? Well, careful what you wish for. Larry and Brian are two of the keepers of the Longship's lighthouse. These are resourceful men. It would take more than a mile and a half of water to silence the love that Larry and Brian have for their wives. At two o'clock precisely, they're going to bridge that gap. Yes, kids, even before mobiles, the only place you could get a good signal was hanging out the window. By me and iPhone. Few people know Semaphore nowadays, but Sally has polished up what she once learnt in the Girl Guides, so now she and Brian can flap their own form of two-way family favourites. Flap? Can't get to flag right now, please leave message after the flare. Stop texting while you talk to me. Damn! It's Mimi's turn. She doesn't know Semaphore, so she and Larry have learned another system. Mimi has no signal lamp, so she can't send words across the water, only receive them. Is... Everything all right. Do you like my hat? See. You. Yes, well, I, I think we'll leave it there. 